No, no, no. <laughs> All right, so uh, he's going to talk uh, about uh, topology optimization in both uh, physics and the scales. Thank you very much, William. So, good morning, everyone. Thank you for Professor Muni for this opportunity to talk here. And this presentation is to be about topology optimization of both physics and both scale system. Especially it will be focused on the work that have been done with a collaboration with the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology and our department here at Unicamp. And is the outline of this presentation. Once my colleagues have already talked about finite elements, topology optimization, so probably I'm going fast in this presentation uh, because we are run of time and they already talk about optimization. So basically we are going to topology optimization of mood physics, some explanation, mood, mood scale system optimization, numerical results, and our ongoing work, which is mood scale optimization and of mood physics systems. So as an introduction, in previous talk, the people have already talked about optimization, so I believe it's clear that is a procedure, generally speaking, a procedure that can be described to make a system better or more effective in some way. But being more mecha in mechanical engineering, we are using the optimization term for structure optimizations that can have a lot of objective functions that people already talked before. But here in this collaboration work, we are going to focus in mean compliance optimization and harmonic response of the systems. Inside the structure optimization, we have three kinds of optimization. The size, size in optimization, we change the parameters of the, our structures. The shape optimization, we change the external border of structure. And the topological optimization, which is the method that we are using now. So as we can see, we can start for a volume. And we are doing finite element analysis of this structure and remove the inefficient part of that structure. And you can come from a structure like this. This is a bridge in the previous work that we have done. So that it was already explained, the evolutionary structure optimization. Here we are going to talk about a little bit fruit structure interaction. In the previous talk, Philippe already talked some fluid equations and the finite elements ap approach. And we are using the UP formulation that have some advantages and some drawbacks. I'm going faster in this formulation. I'm going more in the results. I believe it will be more interesting to see that. So we have this system, the structure and the structure and fluid system. We have the interface, but it's very important for us to see how it become a force applied in the structure, become a pressure in the fluid domain. Then we have here the structure, the equation, the linear elastic equation for the structure domain, the Helmut equation for the fluid domain in the frequency domain we are analyzing, and several boundary conditions that we are applying. S specifically this Neumann boundary condition, which transmitting the force between two domains. So once we have that equation, we can choose, in order to get the finite element discretization, we should choose a weighted residual approximation, then integrate it over the domain. Here we can see the equation integration over the structural and fluid domain. Then using the Green theorem, we can active the weak form of that, of that equation from structural and fluid domain. And after that, we can choose appropriate functions in order to interpolate our variables. And finally, in terms of elements, our equation can be right like this. 
and we have the matrix, stiffness matrix from the structure, mass, ma mass matrix from the structure and from fluid. Our external load that will be applied on the nodes can be on the structure or in the fluid domain and the interface. So our unsymmetrical couple structures, it can be seen here. Sorry for this, so maybe it's not possible to see there but it's an unsymmetrical system. Then it will be a harmonic load applied in the structure or in the fluid part. And once you have harmonic loads, you have a harmonic response. And our unsymmetrical linear system, considering these harmonic loads, can be right as you see here. Then we want to optimize, actually we want to minimize this response on the structure, that will be the displacement of the structure, and we want to minimize the pressure, that will be the acoustic pressure in the fluid domain. <coughs> so, as objective function, we want to minimize the displacement and the fluid, and subject to the equilibrium equation, and as it was said before, always in this kind of optimization, we, are, we have a prescribed final volume. So the equation, um, equilibrium equation and final volume, it will be the constraint of our optimization problem. Then after doing a sensitivity analysis, we can, re can reach this sensitivity number from the structure. So the idea is to be the same that it was already explained. Make the finite element analysis of the system and remove the more inefficient part or material of that system. When you're talking about mode scale, that's to be a little bit different. Now, we don't want to optimize only the max structure, but the material that composes that max structure. Then we have to do a finite element analysis, not on the macro scale, but on the micro scale. And then the objective function is to be find a better distri material distribution on the macro and micro scale in order to minimize our response. And then here, the sensitivity analysis, we need a material interpolation in order to do the sensitivity analysis. Then the sensitivity analysis will be done on micro and macro scale. In the micro scale, in the macro scale, we use the homogenization theory in order to get the effective elastic matrix. And here is the sensitivity analysis on the macro and micro scale. And it's very similar to that case showed before, where we, get, where we can classify the element in accordance with his matrix stiffness and mass and the displacement on the micro and macro scale. Some now numerical results. We can have a steady state problem. So what can be this? For example, here we have a piston red model. So we have a structure doing the symmetry. Here it's only the half part of the piston. So it's fi fixed here and constrain in this direction, in the x direction, constrain in x direction, and the fluid is, up, is applying a pressure in the structure, and we want to optimize this design domain in order to get the stiffness structure, considering a final volume of 30%. So this is the begin with the full design domain, then start removing material of our design domain, as you can see, the interface between the domains is changing. And for the final design domain, we can see that the interface is very different. And that will be how it looks like our piston head. Here we have some example in the literature and the example that we have found. And that's a 3D approximation on that same example. So here we have only the structural part but in the simulation, we have a fluid top of that structure, make the pressure, and we want to optimize this structure. We can see here the internal cavities 
in the 3D uh, structure. This result was presented in the Engineer Optimization Journal 2015. Yeah, last year it was presented in the Opt Engineer Optimization Journal. Other kind of problems you have we can deal with that approximation is the frequency response problem. So here the idea is a little bit different. That problem was a static problem and you want to max maximize, maximize the stiffness. Here we have a frequency force applied here in the bottom of the structure with certain frequency, 120 hertz, and we want to maximize, maximize the stiffness of this design domain in order to minimize the displacement of this structure. And here we have a fluid outside the structure. The pressure distribution can be seen here, and you can have two kinds of final structure. Considering that the fluid cannot go inside the domain, then you have three phase structure. So we have fluid, structure, and void. Or we can consider that the fluid can go inside the domain. Then we have a two-phase final structure. And the evolution of these two different approach is shown here. The, the convergence after 35, fourth iteration. <coughs> and again, a 3D representation of that problem. <coughs> and here only the structural part of that optimization, so the initial gas design and the optimized design in order to minimize the displacement in the bottom of that structure. And this result was present in a final element analysis and design journal last year. Other kind of problem is a natural frequency problem. So we can have a coupled system like this with a fluid cavity and the structure, and you may want to reduce or increase the first natural frequency or any natural frequency of your system. So here you have the shape mode of vibration considering that coupled system, and here A is open cavity. So here we can have a closed or open cavity. For open cavity, uh, P0 is imposed on that line, or a closed cav cavity, so it's a um, uh, ridged wall is considered that. So we can see that the shape mode is a little bit different, and the optimization to be considering only the first natural frequency. We have the other results, but here we're going to show the optimization considering the first natural frequency for both cases. So this is the final optimized topology we have found. And here you can see the increase of the first natural frequency for the open cavity and closed, closed cavities. This result was published in the same journal last year. Then another kind of problem is when you are consider we are considering the mode scale system, so we should optimize the macro and the material of the structure. And here we want to minimize the displacement of these beams that are subject to the uh, um, harmonic external load. So there's a harmonic external load, this beam is vibrating, and I want to minimize the displacement in the central part of this beam. For this, I'm going to show the best, I'm going to find, I should find the best design from the macro structure and the material. And here we have some results. So that considering different aspect ratio of the dimension of this beam, H and L. So for a short beam, we have this kind of unit cell composing the material of the structure. Here we can see the assembly of the, sorry, the assembly of this structure and here the macro. So Actually, the external load is applied on the macro, but we are optimizing the macro and the material of this structure. The convergence can be seen here. 
our objective function, which means the mean displacement in the central part of this structure, and the volume reduction from the macro and micro volume fraction. Here is the same idea. We just have a different approach of load, and we want to minimize the displacement in the top part of this design domain. Again, we start, the difference here is that we start with the same volume that we finish our um, optimization process. So the number of the size of structure keep constant in the macro and in the material. I only redistribute this material in order to get uh, optimized results. So the volume here is constant and in the material. Then we can see more clearly the minimization of our objective function. And the frequency response, because the external load is harmonically applied, ap applied, we can see here the frequency range of we want to minimize. And the initial gas design has this frequency response. And the final gas design has this response. We can see that the first natural frequency was increased from uh, close to 100 hertz from more than 350 hertz. The result was published this year in the computer math and applied mechanics and engineering. And here we have another um, class of problems. This problem was another collaboration work with Delft University in the Netherlands. So here we have a submerged buoyancy structure and we want to maxim maximize the stiffness and the buoyancy property of this kind of structure. You can see hyzers and we want to optimize this in yellow. This is a structure that is supporting, that is holding these ri risers. And here is the, our modeling. So our buoyancy structure, our fluid, in, we can see that due to the symmetry, we have just one part of our buoyancy. And you can optimize only one quarter of the structure due to the symmetry. Then we can have three different cases for this approach. We can start from a full design domain, and that's what we found from the optimized topology. We can start from an initial gas design, considering that the interface can change during the optimization, or we can say that the interface between fluid and structure cannot change that we can see the final volume is the same for all of this case. So just remember that here we have not only one objective function. The objective function here is composed by the buoyancy property of the structure and the compliance of structure. It's a little bit different from the initial case. And here we can see the evolution of the volume fraction and our objective function. You can have here a restriction from the buoyancy. So I can say during the optimization process that the buoyancy cannot go behind, cannot be under this certain limit, the property. So should hold that riser with certain properties. This was published last last week, in the engineer optimization these results. And that's what we are working right now, our ongoing work. Now we are optimizing the fluid structure system, but considering the periodic constraint. So now we want to find the best topology for this domain, but imposing some periodic constraint. So I should divide our domain in a certain number of unit cells and say that the topology in each unit cell should have the same properties. So we impose that constraint in our system. Then let's see here. We have the acoustic domain. We have 
uh, external load here could be a machine running here, for example, and we want to minimize the sound pressure in this point. And for this, we need to optimize this design domain, imposing some periodic constraint in this domain. Then the number of unit cells can vary. We, we are going to analyze different unit cell modes. So if I consider in that I have only four unit cells, that will be the topology of unit cell I get here. If I divide in x direction and y direction, I can in eight to mode, I have this. We can see that there's no convergence here. Then I can keep in refining this mesh and we can see that our final topology is getting a part in, that it's important because when we're using homogenization process, we, are, we don't know how is the size of our structure. So it's hard to say how can I use in addi additive manufacturing to construct this. But now we, we have, we know the size of the structure in order to get a convergence in this topology. You can see the convergence for you know, four cases, for different mesh of our periodic constraint. And another case, we have a barrier here, then acoustic, I impose a sound here and want to minimize the sound in another side, in another acoustic cavity, and again, I impose the periodic constraint considering eight unit cell, 16 unit cells, and we can see that again, we have the convergence of our topology. Here is the evolution. So the initial gas design was like this, in the 10th direction, and after 58 direction, con the convergence for this final topology. This was this first case. Again, the frequency response of the pressure, now the frequency response considering the pressure, not the displacement, like in the first case, the frequency response now is the pressure, acoustic pressure in this point. We can see that in the frequency that we want to minimize, it was great reduction of the frequency response. So that's all I should, I have prepared for today. Thank you for the FAPESP. Thank for CPD for this invitation and RMIT and Unicamp. Thank you. So questions? The thing I'm getting the questions. Uh, I'm getting this when, when you're modeling. Uh, I'm very naive questions. When you're modeling uh, multi-scale resolution and uh, you're getting some kind of insight of. Uh, how the material has to be. Um, I, I don't know, but it's okay from a computational point of view, so you get the best op optimal model for that. But I mean, you can really do that material? Using another... Shapes? I don't know. I, I'm not that, you know, I'm not working on that field, but I mean, some some shapes in there may be the optimum, but are, are facing yeah, now using the additive manufacturing, it's possible to construct something very complex like this. I believe you are talking about this one is very, but it's not easy. But what you can do is applying certain constraint. It's possible to do. Then you can. I di I didn't talk about this parameter, but you can adjust your parameters in order to not to have this kind of inner bars in your material. You, you can adjust your parameters. As they talk in the previous talk, um, the radius of the BSO parameters can be adjusted in order to get larger structure inside your material. But I believe this structure can be done nowadays using additive manufacturing, 3D printer. Yeah, yeah, the properties here, from this specific case, I believe it's aluminum, aluminum, yeah, I, I'm not sure. But you, yeah, we have to put some material properties, the younger modelings. I can understand 
understand how can you make different shapes, but how can you change the distribution of the material within those shapes? For example, here. Yes. Sorry. Here we start with the same. We start with 30% of the volume and keep this 30% only dis redistributing the material. No, no, no. Here is just one material. This color means only the sensitivity analysis of the structure. But this the same material here with this property. So where is the two material? No, just one material. Here is the microstructure. So here is the material property that I use to construct this structure. Look, at, yeah. if I look here inside the structure, then I have this structure. So it's, it's in different scale. Okay. This is the material. <laughs> this is the structure. The material is a type of lace. You know? A microscale here, a rede that has that format. Is it? Okay, what are the materials? Are these two guys? No. Just. Ah, that's why we are working right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But here, just one material distributed in different ways inside the structure, but one material. Here is void, not material. Oh, I, I, okay. yeah. When you have two materials... It's a different approach. It's a different approach. Yeah, we need to put some constraint and Yeah, we are working. Yeah, we already have some. The case, pistol. Or other cases, you start seeing, you know, like, uh, I don't know how to call this, but it's, there is empty space. In empty space inside the uh, structure. Uh, uh, what I, my, my question is, 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 is this a, a consequence that you don't have more material to add, or it's just because it plays some kind of function? It plays a kind of function here. As you can see here, in the 2D case, this this void part inside the structure, because I, ha I set the final volume. I said the final volume should be, should be 30%. In order to get the stiffness structure with 30%, I should have this void part, this role inside that structure. Or the, otherwise, I will not get the stiffness structure. Sure. So, how much is the improvement in the, in the I mean, comparing what, what, you're, what you see there with what's available, easily available today, is the improvement in the properties worth the extra price they would pay for uh, the technology to produce the materials, uh, as it, you suggest there? Yeah, it's hard to know. I believe it's depend on the case, the, how it's constructed. It's, yeah, it, it's hard to say it's yeah. worth or not. Probably in some cases not. Probably not for some cases. But in what case would we actually be, be worth for, the, for a company to invest in, this, uh, in the very fine detail? Well, I haven't think about that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. once you build once, it's not like a 
you know, it's a pipeline thing. So if you can reduce the costs of material. I think that there is actually. Yeah, I thought uh, Today, there is uh, some parts in the, in the vehicle are made using uh, manufacturing, additive manufacturing now, nowadays. And, the, and we use this kind of uh, technology. The cost is it's, it's almost the, uh, the same if you have uh, some detail or, or not. Uh, yeah. You can have a finer control there and it's still be cost effective. Yeah. In few years, Chinese uh, technologies. Excuse me, just yeah. one quick question. So you showed uh, submerged wire structures. Uh, I guess that is for oil vessels, right? Yes. Sure yes. So what are you optimizing there? It's not pre uh, sound pressure. No, 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 no. It's the compliance of that, of that structure that it's holding the hyzer. There's a hyzer okay. and there's a structure holding that with the buoyance effect. And we are optimizing the compliance, keeping certain buoyance properties of them. So it's a combined objective function. Oh, here you can see. Yeah. Longer. And uh, there is a, is a special case of lazy wave configuration. They try to, shoot, to choose the, the points properties to minimize the stress in the right. In the, in the, ah, in the right. In the right. Exactly. Ah, the stress. Yes. The and sometimes you need to different points values to fix the uh, position. Yeah, the, the riser the cannot be here or here. Then you can try to keep them constant in that part of, in order to minimize the stress. But isn't this kind of structure uh, cannot have any contractions because uh, it's very long and it works uh, very flexible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can have problems with buffing. Mm -hmm. Without capitalists, with capitalists. Ah. <laughs> All right, if no further questions, uh, let's thank uh, 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 <laughs>